Well, I am very excited about this one. I've got the EcoFlow Delta Max here, as well as the two expandable batteries. These batteries are basically just a copy of what's inside here, but don't have the inverters in here. So this is the largest setup that you can get with the EcoFlow Delta Max. I paid for this out of my own pocket. So you guys know this is 100% unbiased. I don't care whether you buy this or not. I'm just bringing you this review, but this system right here has baffled me. It has been an amazing system, but you will want to stick around to the very end because there's something that will surprise you. But like I said, I bought these out of my own pocket. I am very excited to show them to you. I've had this set up for a couple of months now. I've tested it in some pretty wild conditions and uh, let's get right into it. Let's see if this can stand up to all the tests. So stick around for this full review of the EcoFlow Delta Max. Okay, so real quick with the specs, this is a 2400 watt pure sine wave inverter, but with the X boost option, you can get up to 3400 watts of continuous output. It has a 5000 watt peak. Now each one of these is 2016 watt hours of battery and they are lithium NMC or lithium ion batteries and each rated to 800 cycles. With the solar input right here, it uses an XT60 connector and you can put up to 800 watts of solar input into this from 11 to 100 volts and up to 10 amps. So basically two strings of panels, each string having five 100 watt panels. The car charger charges at about 100 watts. Uh, but one of the coolest features right on the back here is you actually have an option to either fast charge or slow charge. Now I find that when I'm fast charging, it actually will commonly flip the breaker on my wall outlets. So it puts in a ton of power super fast. But the slower you charge it up, the more cycles it's going to last. So the pre-built in slow charger and the wall charger has no power brick adapter. It is just a simple cord like this, which is very awesome in my opinion. But one of the other cool features about having this fast charger is when I have it connected to these batteries, it's basically slow charging all three batteries. So it makes sure that these cycles last much longer for all of these batteries. You can still slow charge with them all connected, but then it's going to be really, really slow charging, but that'll be even better for your battery. So either way, the fast charger is really fast for just this, but perfect for having all three of these batteries. The AC ports on here will automatically turn off after 12 hours of no use. The 12 volt port is regulated and there are actually multiple USB-A as well as two USB-C at 100 watt output each. So there's some a definite ability to charge really fast from those ports. One of the coolest features is it has a Wi-Fi app. I'm going to show you that here in a second. And it does have pass through charging where I can be running something and charging it at the same time. It is UL listed, but they specifically say that you need to make sure that when you connect the batteries, that you don't connect the batteries while this is charging or discharging. You need to turn the system off, plug it all together, turn it back on, make sure the icons are listed here on the front panel on the screen, indicating that the batteries are connected. And then from there, you can start using it as necessary. So this is 6,000 watt hours of battery capacity. That is what I use on my Titan solar generator at my off-grid cabin. If you haven't seen my videos about my off-grid cabin, then you may want to go check those out. And I actually recently took this up to my off-grid cabin. We were having such a bad snowstorm that I actually had to take water tanks from here at my house to go fill up my cistern at the cabin so that way there was water to be used at the cabin. I have a solar powered well pump at the cabin and that usually works, but in the middle of a snowstorm where we've had days of clouds, obviously it wasn't working. And the Delta Max actually worked really well and ran a pump that was able to fill the cistern up. It ran about 500 plus gallons out of the tanks that I had into the cistern very quickly and had no problems powering it. For a medium system like this, I think this is going to be the go-to recommendation. It's not as big or as expandable or fast charging as the Titan solar generator, but if I needed something a little less powerful that's still very portable and has expandable battery and good solar input, this is the winner right here. So let me get everything connected up and we're going to do a big draw of basically 2,400 watts off of this continuously to see how well it does. So one of the cool things that they included is a storage compartment in each of these batteries. But what I think would have been extra cool is if they had formed the base of the battery to conform to the top of the battery. And the first thing it starts doing is auto balancing the batteries to make sure that they're all the same level. So that's another really good feature is that you don't have to pre-balance these before you connect them together. The first time I connected this setup like this, this was at 100% and these were at 30% and there was 
no problem at all. So I've got this just under 2400 watts and it's interesting because it says it's got 1600 watts input coming in and that's because over here on the batteries each are putting out about 820 watts right into here. All right we'll see how this goes. It's been going for an hour non-stop and it's still going strong. No voltage issues or even quitting or anything like that. So this has been going for officially 100 minutes. This is working in about an 80 degree environment and the internal temperature is only 89 degrees. That is really, really good cooling. Okay, I finally have the Delta Max connected. It is having connection issues. The battery is only at 89 degrees Fahrenheit. That's really good. It shows me the exact battery percentage and how much longer it's going to last at the current output. The input is just showing that it's from the batteries. It's not actually from solar or any AC power. And you can toggle between these two screens right here. I can control these outlets and see the power coming off of them. But also, as is really cool, if you go to settings, you see you can actually control a lot of this information here. So you can see I've got all these settings right here. Uh, I can change the discharge level, the charge speed for the AC input, car input, whether it's going to beep or not, use the smart gas generator. So I'm really liking the app. It's very simple, yet very useful and good user interface. Okay, well this thing is still chugging along. It's been at 1% for quite a while. We're basically still draining 2,373 watts. It's been going for 135 minutes. This is 89% efficient. That is pretty incredible. Now I doubt it would be that efficient if we did the same test off of just the main unit without the extra batteries. But that's one of the benefits of having the extra batteries is you're not doing such a heavy load off of just one battery. You're splitting that load between all of the batteries so it works out much better. Well, some of the other good news is that this is charging up immediately after doing that heavy draw on it and the air coming out of it is already cool. See, we're getting about 1600 watts input in, which is really fast. This is all charged back up again. I'm gonna do the next test, which is trying to test out the X-Boost. The X-Boost says that I can get this to run continuously for 3,400 watts. That is a really high amount of power. So I've got two heat guns right here, and then I've got my lights to fine tune the power output. These are completely 100% fully charged up. So let's get into this and see how well it does. It didn't like that, that didn't work. So it says overload. So I wonder why that didn't work. Let me go ahead and reset. This is interesting. Now for the solar charging test of the EcoFlow at Delta Max, I actually decided to come up to the cabin because I've got a ton of solar panels up here. And currently I have 630 watts connected to this. Basically, the best way to over panel this, the maximum that I can get is a thousand watts connected. And that's by having five 100 watt solar panels connected in series on one leg, and then another set of five panels connected all together in series, bring those together into a parallel. So it's a series parallel connection, just very similar as what I've done on my Titan solar generator. You can barely over panel it. So I only have 630 watts connected, but I've had 615 watts from the solar panels going into this. So the MPPT charge controller is very efficient. The downside is because I can only get 800 watts of solar input at the very maximum, and I can get about five to six hours at the very most of solar peak hours going into this. That basically means they take the 800 watts, multiply it by the five peak hours that there are per day, and that's gonna give me about 4,000 watt hours or four kilowatt hours of battery being charged up in a single day. That means the main unit and one extra battery can be charged in a single day if I'm not running anything and the solar conditions are perfect, which is definitely something you don't wanna be banking on that the solar conditions are gonna be perfect. So overall, the biggest issue that I've had has been with the app, getting it to connect to the unit. Uh, it's not working very often. It is complicated to get it to work. I don't know why, it's very frustrating. I wish it would connect easier and be more user-friendly as far as connecting to it. But once you're in and using it, it's great. The app isn't necessarily a deal breaker. The hardship for me is the solar input. Now, 800 watts of solar input with the ability to over panel just a little bit is good, but for emergency preparedness, 
you're looking at maybe a refrigerator and maybe another freezer or maybe a light, some lights and fans. It would be nice if you could use different external batteries. Again, not a deal breaker. On the good news is it does have more solar input than most middleweight solar generators. It does have a good size inverter at 2400 watts. That's pretty good for most things that you're gonna be able to need to run. Battery expandability, all of those things are really, really great features. And it is one of the most affordable units when broken down to price per watt. So overall, I do think this is a good system. I do recommend it for emergency preparedness. I personally bought this with my own money. And so if you appreciate that, don't forget to smash the like button. I will have links down below with discounts and any other information related to this. And I'm excited to try out the Delta Pro that I'll be getting here in the future. If you truly wanna support the channel, either use the links down below I do get a small commission from that. It doesn't cost you anything. If anything, you're getting a discount. But in addition to that, you can also check out patreon.com slash Minuteman Prep and become a supporter of the channel. I'll eventually be doing giveaways and special information there just for my Patreon members. And all of that money goes to buying equipment like this. In the end, what matters to me is that you get prepared. So be prepared. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next video.